before break, what do you guys want to talk about as far as let's you, let's go back to graphics. You can click you that. Have, you could have clicked that folder and gotten everything down down below there where we were at. This? Um where you were under the uh um it, alarm that, values on that controller and you just clicked what was that? That was the uh pool. The shore gauge changer? Yeah, if you double click Shore HX. If I click that, it'll give me every object that belongs to that controller right here. And that's every box that's underneath it. That's all that. You, yeah. Yeah. Everything that's in these folders is over here on this right hand side. Okay. It breaks it down. You can change the way it views. This is just the way I like to view it. Okay? If I click on the controller, I want to know what's in the controller. So this gives me about bottom right corner says 59 objects. Everything in that controller is an object, whether it's a program, whether it's an output, or a numeric, or an input, or a function, doesn't matter what it is, it is an object that belongs to that controller. And that controller is that controller, right there. If I right click that controller itself, go to check the com status, it says status is online, right? Backnet device ID matches the serial number on the controller, okay? And the serial number has to be the serial number, whoops, right here. So if you guys are having other issues, communications-wise, your serial numbers have to match up. Somebody goes in and, and inadvertently changes this number, that controller is not going to communicate anymore. So it's, it's, that's the way it addresses, it uses serial numbers to address. That's all stuff that we'll get into more later, too. Um, so all these objects over here are what belong to this particular controller. Okay. Now, if you go if you go back up to the BCX, even though all these objects belong to the Schroer heat exchanger controller, if I click on the BCX, I don't get all the individual objects displaying in this view that belong to each of these individual controllers. I just get the objects themselves that belong to the BCX, okay? And there's a bunch of them, okay? So if you want to expand that view, it's just like Windows. These are just like folders. Inside one folder, you get this, and if you expand it, you get more folders and more information. Same kind of thing. It's all set up to, to look just like Windows. Um, The, the, the number one thing to remember, especially when you go to troubleshooting, is the backnet side is the only side that it really exists in. The database itself, the communications, all the information is really backnet information. It's not infinite information. The, the programming translates backnet information and gives you a view of it on the infinity side. Okay. But the infinity side is easier to get around in, it's easier to see. It's what we use for, for our displays and our graphics and all that kind of stuff. So that's what we always use. Um, if you don't have a particular controller in the backnet side, you'll notice if I was to go in here and delete that controller right there, what I just did is I removed it from the database. I didn't wipe out the memory or anything in the controller that's out there, I just got rid of it in the database. Okay? If I do that, I go back to the infinity side, I'm not going to have any values because it's not in the database anymore. Okay? So you've got to be real careful when you're, when you're messing around. You can delete it out of the infinity side and it'll come right back typically. Um, a lot of the stuff you won't be able to delete anyway. But it's, it's important to remember that the backnet side is where everything really exists. Okay? The other side is kind of a mirror image of it. If it's not on this side, you don't have it, okay? So when you're having problems, the backnet side is, is, is critical to remember to go and check and see if it's online on the backnet side. So, and that will hopefully happen seldom enough that you don't have to mess with it. Don't forget all that. Yeah, well, year from now or two. probably what will happen is somebody will call and say, hey, we got an issue over here. We'll One of us will get online, get his tape out remotely, and we'll fix it. So, um, as far as Continuum Explorer goes, you guys can change views. This is something that we'll talk about on the phone when we do troubleshooting. This says all paths right here in this bar. You have your Explorer window. 
over here on the left, you have your main window on the right. Okay, I call them panes. This is a pane. This is a pane. The left-hand pane that gives you your uh, tree. Okay. Um, if you go to this icon, your Explorer bars icon, and click it, it'll change the view. Now we're looking at network views. Click it again, gives you folder view. Click it again, gives you templates view. You see how now I don't even get to see the BCX or anything. Uh, Backnet devices only. And, and then all paths. I use all paths because I want to see everything that's going on. Um, so if you need to change, it, typically what Bill leaves it at is your network view. Okay. There's a lot of things you can't see in your network view that you're going to end up needing for troubleshooting. So I always leave it on all paths. But if you have to go to all paths, to do it, all you got to do is go to that button. Click it until it goes to all paths. Um, and then your other options up here, you can do you know, pretty much anything you need to do with those. It's got the same kind of buttons as Windows does. If you want to go up a level, you click the up button. Okay. If you're, you know, down here somewhere, a couple miles away from the BCX, and you want to go back up, you know, you just click your up button. It takes you up another level, just like, just like Windows. Uh, so that's just kind of a quick overview of navigation of that. I guess after break we'll get back into the graphics, and we'll go through those. The, the exclamation marks. Exclamation marks mean that a value has changed and the controller thinks it needs to be backed up to flash. 99% of the time that's what that means. Another thing that it means is if, remember we were talking, if you change something in the database with the controller offline and the controller comes back online, it'll tell you you need to reload it, you'll get the same exclamation. Object has been changed offline or edited offline, you need to reload the controller. Oh, it's not necessarily a an alert because it's an exclamation mark. Right. It's a reminder. Yeah. Yeah. It can be ignored for the most part. If you're having problems, you put your mouse over it and and take a look and see what it says. Let's go over here real quick. Actually, it's break time, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go over here, go to Explorer. Just do this one last thing. Click on Explorer. If you put your mouse we over got, an exclamation, we got a meeting at ten o'clock. Oh, do you? Yes. For how long? Half an hour probably. Oh, that's right. You said that yesterday, didn't you? If you put your mouse over it, it says requires a flash backup. 99% of the time that's what we get. So, okay, I guess I'll see you guys after your meeting.